Hi, this is Mr. Klein, and I am reading Chapter 14, The Case of the Weird, Weird Witch. Mr. E worked so hard the next few days that my class caught up with Mrs. Brisbane's lesson plans, but it wasn't all hard work. He also read us a fur-raising story about a secret code, and it turned out that the secret code was also a math problem. During the day, I was busy trying to keep up with the lessons. That night, I'd make notes in my notebook so I'd remember what we'd learn in class. But there was more than just schoolwork going on. Mr. E talked to Hurry Up Harry about getting back to class on time. And suddenly, Harry wasn't late anymore. One day, Phoebe came up to my cage smiling. She held up her wrist with the daisy watch on it. See, Humphrey, I still have it, she said. And guess what? Yesterday, after school, I went to a meeting of this new club. It's only for kids whose parents are in the military. We talked about our parents, and we played a game, and we're having a Halloween party, too. That's positively great, I squeaked. I could tell Phoebe was feeling better already, and she remembered her homework all week, too. Joey and Thomas were together all the time. I even heard them whispering about their Halloween costumes. They said something about hats, or maybe it was bats, and they also mentioned grasses. Maybe they meant glasses. Were they going to dress up as bats with glasses, or wear hats made of grasses? You can never guess what humans will wear for Halloween. There was so much talk about Halloween, I couldn't help thinking about last year's party. I didn't know much about Halloween then. All I knew was that humans wore costumes and that the class would have a party. But last year we had a different class. We had a different teacher, and I was a different hamster. Oh, I was still Humphrey, but I was starting to learn about school. Now, I knew a lot, lot, lot more. I just didn't know what my costume would be. The night before Halloween, Aldo came into room 26 and stopped. He looked around and said, Well, you look at that. It's almost as clean as when Mrs. Brisbane was here. And where is she now? I squeaked loudly. I guess Aldo didn't understand me. How do you like my costume? Aldo twirled around. He looked the same as usual. He had on a blue shirt and black pants, and he was pushing his cleaning trolley. This is my costume. Get it? Aldo roared with laughter, and I realized that he was joking. I like jokes. I think most hamsters do. I need a costume, too, I squeaked. Boing, boing, Og agreed. I know you're excited, Aldo said. I talked to Richie today. He's excited, too. Richie was his nephew, and he'd been in room 26 last year. He's going to be a monster, Aldo explained. It was hard to imagine Richie as a monster. He was a very nice human. Maybe there are nice monsters, too. I'll bet there are. When Aldo sat down to have his dinner, I was hoping for a pumpkin treat, and I wasn't disappointed. Trick or treat, buddy, he said. Thanks, Aldo. Trick or squeak, I called after him. Later, when Aldo was gone, I told Og, Tomorrow is Halloween. Boing, boing, he replied. I need a costume, I said, walking toward the edge of our table. Don't you? Boing, 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 boing. He didn't seem to like the idea of wearing a costume. You don't have to wear a costume, Og, but I want one, I said. I had an idea today when I was thinking about the Sherlock Holmes story, and I have a plan. Og dived into his water with a giant splash. I dashed away to keep from getting wet. I slid down the table leg and scurried across the room to the shelves where the art supplies were stored. Luckily, they were low to the ground, so I could easily scramble up the side of a bin and slip over the edge. Once I was inside, I found what I wanted. I gnawed and gnawed until I had exactly what I needed for my costume. Holding my treasure in my mouth, I climbed up a stack of glue sticks, hopped on a tall jar of glitter, and slid back over the edge. I swung back up to the table and went straight to my cage. I hid my costume in my bedding and closed the cage door behind me. Boing, boing, Og twanged. My costume is a surprise, Og. You'll find out what it is tomorrow, I squeaked back at him. Everybody will find out tomorrow. There were no costumes on Halloween morning. 
There were just the usual lessons, but after lunch, Mr. E sent everyone out of the room to change into their costumes. Simon's mom and Paul, small Paul's dad were there to help. When the room was empty, Mr. E turned toward Aug and me and said, You're about to have a big surprise. So are you, I squeaked. Then he left the room too. While the room was empty, I made sure my costume was still under my bedding. It seemed like a long, long, long time before the door finally opened again. In walked a tall pirate and a short ninja. I guess they were tall Paul and small Paul. Then a princess with a sparkling crown on her head came in. That was Holly. More kids came into the classroom in amazing costumes. Phoebe wore a camouflage military uniform. Kelsey was a ballerina in a pink tutu. Her eye was back to normal, and she looked very graceful. Then a very surprising pair came in. They were dressed alike in long coats and those deer stalker hats like Sherlock Holmes wore, and they carried huge magnifying glasses. Thomas and Joey were both dressed like Sherlock Holmes, so they had been talking about hats and glasses, not bats and grasses. Right behind them was Simon in a superhero costume with a blue cape, along with Harry, who was all wrapped in white like a mummy. Then something amazing happened. A table rolled through the door. There was a plate on the table with a knife and a fork next to it, and on the plate was Rosie's head. Eek! I squeaked. Rosie smiled and everybody laughed. Someone had put a box over her shoulders with a hole for her head. She had painted a tablecloth and the plate, knife, and fork were glued on. It was the best costume I'd seen so far. My friends sat at their tables and waited, or in their tables, in Rosie's case. We all waited while, quite a while before the door opened again. I figured I'd see Mr. E, but that's not what I saw at all. In came a grinning pumpkin head on a skinny skeleton body and a truly horrible old witch. She was all hunched over and leaned on a crooked wooden cane. Her face was hideous with huge warts and a pointed nose and green skin. The room was silent as they walked to the front of the room and faced us. How do witches tell time? The pumpkin skeleton asked in a strange high-pitched voice. With a witch watch, the witch answered, and then she cackled wildly. The sound in my fur stand on end. What do you call a nervous witch? The pumpkin skeleton asked. A twitch, the weird witch answered and cackled loudly again. I was about to go hide in my sleeping hut when the pumpkin skeleton asked another question. And which witch are you? The pumpkin skeleton asked. This time, the witch didn't answer. Class, who knows which witch this is? The skeleton asked us. For a few seconds, no one spoke or squeaked. And then, Small Paul shouted, Mrs. Brisbane! Mrs. Brisbane was a witch? And all this time I thought she was a ballerina. The witch reached up and took off her witchy face, which was just a mask. And there was Mrs. Brisbane, smiling happily at us. Everyone in the class cheered and clapped. Og splashed loudly, boing, 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 boing. I climbed up to the top of my cage and shouted, Welcome back! Mr. E took off his pumpkin head and grinned. I'm so happy to see all of you, Mrs. Brisbane said in her regular voice. Mr. E came to visit me, and we planned this surprise for you. I'm so proud of how well you did on your math test. The door opened, and a mad scientist with a wild white hair and a white coat came in, along with a clown with a red nose and a pink, blue, and green striped wig. Happy Halloween, the clown sounded, just like Mrs. Wright. In fact, I was sure it was Mrs. Wright. When I saw that the clown had a whistle around her neck, Welcome back, the mad scientist sounded, just like Mr. Morales. It's good to be back, Mrs. Brisbane said. Still leaning on her stick, Mrs. Brisbane hobbled over to see Og and me. Of course I missed my friends Humphrey and Og, she said. I'm so glad to see you, I squeaked. Og jumped for joy. Boing! Hi, Og. Hello, Humphrey, Mrs. Brisbane said. You know, Humphrey, you're the cause of this. My heart sank to my, sank to my toes. 
What did I do? I squeaked. Our teacher turned to the class. You see, I was running a little late for school that morning. I was already in my car when I realized I'd forgotten Humphrey's fresh vegetable treat. As I ran back to the house, my heel caught on the front step and I tumbled down and broke my ankle. She lifted a corner of her long witch's skirt and showed us her cast. I'm unsqueakably sorry, I told her. I couldn't reach my phone, and Mr. Brisbane wasn't home, so I couldn't call the school to tell them I wouldn't be in, she explained. So that's why Principal Morales had been so confused that morning. My neighbor finally found me and took me to the hospital. I had to have an operation on my ankle before I could start walking again, she continued. But of course, it was all my fault and not Humphrey's. What did I forget to do, Kelsey? You forgot to pay attention to what you were doing, Kelsey answered. At least I wasn't pie-whacked about what happened anymore. The mystery was solved at last. I was happy to have our teacher back, but I wish she, she'd learned to be a ballet dancer instead of breaking her ankle. Ouch. Mr. E brought a chair for Mrs. Brisbane, and it was time for Mr. Morales and Mrs. Wright to judge the costumes. I dove down into my bedding, found my yarn, and put on my costume. Mr. Morales and Mrs. Wright smiled and whispered as they watched my friends parade around the room. No one was watching me, so to get their attention, I began squeaking loudly. Squeak! Squeak! Look at me! I repeated over and over. Finally, Mrs. Brisbane turned to see what was wrong, and she burst out laughing. What on earth is Humphrey wearing? Everyone rushed over to my cage, so I stood up, my rear paws, and squeaked some more. He's got red yarn on his head, Rosie said. Thomas leaned in and held up his magnifying glass. It's red yarn, all right. Joey leaned in and held up his magnifying glass. It looks like hair, red hair. Kelsey giggled. He looks like a redhead from the Redheaded League story. I guess it took a redhead to recognize another redhead. Everyone was laughing and pointing except Mr. Morales and Mrs. Wright. They were whispering and pointing. Who gave Humphrey that yarn, Mrs. Brisbane asked. No one answered. Whoever you are, you're a very clever person, she said. For once, Mrs. Brisbane was wrong. I am a very clever hamster. Mr. Morales announced that he and Mrs. Wright had made a decision. He reached in his pocket and pulled out a blue ribbon that had best costume written on it. It's a tie between Rosie Rodriguez and Humphrey. Boing, 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 Ob cheered. He knew I'd wanted to win. Everyone else cheered too, and Mr. Morales put the ribbon on my cage. He had another best costume ribbon, which he gave to Rosie. I was proud to share the honor with her. Of course, you're all winners in room 26, he said. Mrs. Brisbane is coming back to teach next week. So I think we should all thank Mr. E for doing a great job. He reached in his pocket and pulled out a gold ribbon that had best substitute written on it. Mr. E looked very happy to accept it. Now, boys and girls, Mrs. Murch is going on a medical leave next week, so room 29 needs a substitute. Do you think I should recommend Mr. E? Everyone cheered wildly, even Mrs. Wright. Then they passed out treats for everyone, including some sunflower seeds for me. All I can say is it was a super, super, super great, great party. That night, when Og and I were alone in room 26, I guess I was the happiest hamster on earth. I made my friends laugh, and I had a shiny blue ribbon on my cage. My favorite teacher, Mrs. Brisbane, was coming back. My next favorite teacher, Ms. Mack, was just down the hall. My other favorite teacher, Mr. E, would still be at Longfellow's school for a while. And even though I'd just solved a lot of mysteries in room 26, I knew that as long as I was a hamster, living in a classroom full of humans, I'd always have plenty of mysteries to solve just like Sherlock Holmes. Humphrey's Detectionary. Sometimes even excellent clues can lead you in the wrong direction, but it doesn't really matter if everything ends well and your teacher comes back. Well, everybody, I hope you really enjoyed reading Mysteries According to Humphrey with our One School, One Book project. We really loved it here at school. We hope that you have a great spring break. Make sure you keep reading.